Now we are talking about microbiome data containers in our bioconductor. Microbiome data containers are standardized ways of representing microbiome data. Um, and they, they provide tools for downstream analysis uh, by, by supporting the ecosystem of tools that understand the data that is provided in the, that format. So what these data containers are, uh, we will go through briefly a rational for these kind of data containers and in particular how the data containers look like in the context of microbiome studies in our bioconductor. So my, the microbiome data containers have to be thought of in the context of the overall data science workflow. And in the overall data science workflow of microbiome research that we discussed in another session, we import the data from uh, different standardized formats to R. And in R we need to specify the, the format in which the data is organized. And that's our data container which we call three summarized experiment. We are coming back to this very soon. And then there will be the ecosystem of tools for downstream analysis of data that is provided in this format. But now we are indeed focusing on the data containers and how they are structured. The data containers support the collaborative development and use of all these different types of tools and uh, efficient building of reproducible and transparent workflows for data analysis. They play an essential role in that whole. So different omics data come in different shapes and different types. Each type of omics data has, has its own special properties, uh, whether we talk about genomics, uh, epigenomics, microbiomics, or any other types of omics, they all have different kinds of statistical properties, different types of feature sizes, different levels of hierarchies, and so forth. This is uh, an, an illustration, a heat map, of microbi microbial abundances from taxonomic profiling data with 16S uh, RNA phylogenetic microarrays. On the rows, you have different taxonomic features, the microbial genera, and on the columns, we have uh, the different samples from a population of 1000 Western adults from a previous publication. This kind of taxonomic profiling tables we can obtain with different techniques from 16s RNA uh, amplicon sequencing to metagenomic sequencing to uh, phylogenetic microarrays but essentially they are tables of abundance providing uh, information on how abundant each microbial species or other microbial grouping is across the different samples we want to standardize the ways this is represented in our bioconductor. And there are several different types of data containers available in this ecosystem that have been developed in the last one or two decades. <clears throat> For instance, the single cell sequencing community has their own data container, container representations that are actually quite close to the, the types we use in microbiome studies. And we also have other types of containers for other purposes. But uh, in, in our context, the focus is on the three summarized experiment data container that you see here. It consists of several different components that we will go through uh, in more detail on the next slides. Uh, the overall data container integrates uh, different uh, aspects of the data together in a systematic and standardized way so that it's it's all well organized and uh, easy to subset, easy to manipulate, easy to use for downstream analysis. Let's have a look at, at these different individual components in this kind of data object. If we want to have an optimal data container, container for microbiome data, we can ask uh, what it should look like. So one aspect of this is having multiple different assays in parallel. For instance, in the context of microbiome, taxonomic analysis, we quite often have the situation that we want to have several different statistical transformations for the data. For instance, the compositional transformation or um, CLR transformation or other types of transformations. We want to organize this together and use them as necessary. Mm. Microbiome data is also hierarchical. We can have hierarchies both for the samples with nested study designs um, host phylogenies or other, other forms of hierarchy. And we often have a hierarchical data on the features, the taxonomic features, because microbial species form phylogenies, 
where they have different relations. Uh, so microbiome data is inherently hierarchical and we want to have efficient ways of representing that. Then we also need to have possibility to include side information on the taxonomic features as well as on the samples that we are analyzing. And uh, this side information can come in many formats as we will discuss shortly. This kind of data representation has to be also optimized in terms of speed and memory. So we want to have efficient analysis that does not take too long to calculate. Um, we want to have a speed data uh, speedy data processing. Finally, this has to be ideally integrated with the rest of the R and bioconductor ecosystem so that we can have access to a wide variety of other tools, applications and frameworks. And for instance, in our context of microbiome analytics, we are able to integrate very nicely with a lot of tools from the single cell experiment ecosystem and community because uh, the tools are largely interoperable. This is just one example. So by, by standardizing the tools and uh, data presentation this way, we can reduce overlapping efforts uh, in the community and make sure that, that we can uh, all contribute to the same pool of, of tools together and build a community of users. So the optimal container for microbiome data is the tree summarized experiment that I mentioned. Uh, this is a relatively recent development. It was uh, originally published in 2021 by Ruichi Huang and others. And uh, it, is, it is an optimized way of, of taking into account many of the things that I mentioned on the previous slides. So let's now have a look at some of the components that compose this. Before we go into that, uh, there is an alternative data container I wanted to mention, the FileSec. Some of you may have heard about the FileSec, which is also a way of representing microbiome taxonomic profiling data in R and Bioconductor. And FileSec has been around for a longer time, uh, since around 2010. And it was developed by Joy McMurdy and Susan Holmes and others. And this FileSec data container is widely used in microbiome research uh, today and uh, there is a lot of different tools available for it. Uh, the three summarized experiment data container is an alternative to FileSec, but these two ecosystems are uh, very nicely interoperable. We, we can build bridges between the two types of ecosystems and we have conversion functions between these two formats. So if you have your data in one of these formats, you can in most cases convert to the other format and use the tools from there when you need. The summarized experiment container starts uh, from the assay. The assay is basically the abundance matrix of the taxa in our context in most cases. On the rows we have the taxonomic features, for instance the microbial species, and on the samples, uh, on the columns we have the samples. And the samples can, for instance, comes, come from a different human individuals or they can come from different environmental samples uh, or, or different laboratory experiments. So um, this is the assay that, that is the starting point for, for the analysis. The, it summarizes the abundances of the microbial groups across the different samples. Then we need to complement this by bringing in the side information about the rows and columns. On the rows we had the taxonomic features, so we may like to have additional information on the taxonomic groups. For instance, the higher level groupings of the microbial species could be phyla, the, the genera, the cl classes, families, and, and so forth. So we can have row data. But we can also have uh, additional sequence information for this taxa. Uh, we, we can represent other types of information, for instance, uh, the status of anaerobic or, or non-anaerobic uh, microbial species and uh, perhaps their preferred living environments and, and so forth. So we can have this kind of uh, rich side information for the taxonomic features. On the column data we have um, side information for the samples. So we may have side information including for instance the age or body mass index or health status of a person. So this is the type of type, type of side information for the columns or for the samples. And we call these additional types of information row data and column data. 
and they complement the assay. In addition, we can have multiple assays in this system, and the multiple assays typically can correspond, for instance, to different transformations of the data. In most cases, we start with absolute count data, where we have counts of microbial groups across the different samples. Um, and then, then we can have different transformation. For instance, the compositional transformation makes sure that all the samples sum up to 100% of microbial abundances. Uh, or we can have adjacent transformations, for instance, the centric log ratio transformation or CLR transformation and other types of transformations. And we can include all these different types in parallel to the same data object. And when we do subsetting of the data, for instance, all these different parallel assays can be subsetted all at the same time at once. This can be very handy for downstream analysis of the data. And it also helps us to keep everything well organized. We can also integrate other types of uh, data. So the alternative assays can be used for data transformation but they always require that we have the same number of features and samples or rows and columns between the different assays. We can relax these assumptions and uh, we can also work with cases where uh, only the samples match one to one, but that there can be different number of features. Um, these are called alternative experiments. And the alternative experiments can be very useful, for instance, when, we, when you want to present different uh, abundance tables for the different taxonomic levels of the data. If you imagine uh, species level abundance tables or genus level abundance tables, for instance, they can have uh, different numbers of features, because in one of the cases you have species as the features and the other case you have genera as the features. So, that, so there can be clearly different numbers of features, but they are still coming from the same samples and the samples do match in such case. So alternative experiments provide a good way of representing that kind of information where the feature numbers may vary. We also have more complex um, ways of representing cases where, um, where also the mapping between the samples can be free relaxing the final assumption, and these are cool, uh, for common, common cases, for instance, in multi-omics experiments, uh, where we may sometimes have more complicated sample mappings. So we can represent different types of um, information bindings in this data object, depending on the, on the type of information and relations between the features and samples. But the main point is that we can bind these together in a, in a standardized and organized ways. And then there are downstream analysis tools that know how to take, in, uh, take advantage of this. So here are some examples of the data operations that are possible building on, on these data containers. So if you, for instance, want to pick up the count assay from a tree summarized experiment object, you can use the first command. If we want to pick the raw data, the side information for the taxa. We can use the row data command. For examples, we can use column data command and alternative experiments can be picked up by this alt exps command and so forth. There are different uh, commands for manipulating the data and picking up different components of this data object. So this, this is the whole tree summarized experiment. And one thing um, that I did not mention is the presence of the tree information for the rows and columns. And this is why we call this tree summarized experiment, because it complements the original summarized experiment container by bringing in these trees. So we can have row tree and we can have column tree. And these trees can be used to represent hierarchical information. On the rows or the taxonomic features, we can use the row tree to represent phylogenies, so the phylogenetic relations between the different microbial groups. Very common use case and also used by many different analysis tools of the microbial communities. On the column tree we can have um, hierarchies for the samples that can correspond to nested study designs or host phylogenies 
for instance. So this, this uh, when we bind these together, we get the three summarized experiment object, and you can even include some additional metadata about the experiments and, and so forth. The three summarized experiment data container is therefore a systematic and organized way of representing microbial taxonomic abundance profiling data. It can also be used for other purposes, but we have been building an ecosystem of tools around the three summarized experiment object together with the rest of the community. It provides a standardized presentation for microbiome data that is optimized for speed and memory requirements uh, in many ways. And it is a key part of the overall data science workflow in microbiome analytics in R and Bioconductor and the starting point for any downstream analytics. And the use of such organized data containers facilitates transparent analysis of microbiome data and enables reproducible research of these communities. It also supports the interoperability of the tools because it becomes much easier for all the different tools uh, to assume a common shared data format and then, then provide tools on top of that. And there is increasing number of uh, documentation available to support the use cases and collaboration on, on these objects.